New this morning, a major development surrounding the missing Malaysia Airlines flight. Two pieces of debris that washed ashore in Mozambique are highly likely to have come from that plane. The disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 remains one of the world's greatest aviation mysteries. For years, sonar technology, despite its power, could not pierce the ocean's deepest secrets. But what if a new groundbreaking technology, 100 times more powerful than traditional sonar, emerged from the mind of a visionary scientist? What if this revolutionary tool, a deep sea LIDAR drone, wasn't just a dream, but a reality already tracking faint signals from the abyss? The quest for answers has led us to Dr. Vincent Line, a name you need to know. He claims to have done the impossible, tracing MH370's final moments. The truth you see might be closer than we ever imagined. The hundredfold power. The thing nobody tells you is that a handful of scientists believed the search was happening in the wrong place based on flawed data. Among them was Dr. Vincent Line, a physicist and oceanographer who many in the mainstream dismissed as a fringe theorist. Many people are crazy about official narratives, but Line argued that the plane didn't just fall out of the sky. He proposed a controlled ditching scenario where the aircraft remained largely intact and glided into the ocean far from the official search zones. He pointed to a specific, incredibly deep area known as the Gilvink Fracture Zone, a place sonar had barely touched. His theory was bold, but without a new way to see through the ocean's dark veil, it was just another idea in a sea of speculation. What many overlooked was that Dr. Line wasn't just working on theories, he was developing a tool that would make sonar look like a child's toy. For five years, in a quiet lab funded by private backers, his team worked on a revolutionary deep-sea drone equipped with something called quantum LIDAR. LIDAR, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging, works by shooting out pulses of laser light. On land and in the air, it can create incredibly detailed three-dimensional maps but sending a powerful, coherent laser beam through three miles of dense, light-swallowing seawater was considered impossible. The pressure alone, which can reach over 8,000 pounds per square inch, is enough to crush a military submarine like a soda can. The most shocking fact is that Line's team solved it. They developed a drone, nicknamed the Pathfinder, capable of withstanding these insane pressures. And its LiDAR system wasn't just powerful. It was, to put it mildly, a game changer. It fired a specialized blue-green laser that could penetrate the water with 100 times the clarity and range of the most advanced sonar systems. It was like switching from a blurry black and white photograph to an ultra high definition color movie. This drone wouldn't just look for a metallic object. It could detect subtle changes in water density, trace microscopic fuel particles, and even pick up the faint lingering energy signature from a plane's black box long after its batteries had faded. The Pathfinder was designed to find a ghost. In late 2023, with the world's attention elsewhere, Dr. Line and his small team launched the Pathfinder from an unmarked vessel in the southern Indian Ocean, heading straight for the coordinates his controversial theory pointed to. They weren't looking for a crash site. They were hunting for a signal, a whisper left behind a decade ago. A new search was on using tech nobody knew existed. The Descent into Darkness The Pathfinder drone began its lonely descent, a journey into a world more alien than the surface of the moon. For the first thousand feet, sunlight still filtered through, creating a deep sapphire blue. But soon that light faded, replaced by a complete and total blackness that has reigned for millennia. You see, this is the midnight zone, a place where the pressure is immense and the only light comes from the bizarre bioluminescent creatures that drift like ghosts in the current. The drone, a marvel of engineering, continued its plunge, its titanium hull holding strong against forces that would instantly pulverize a human body. 3,000 feet, 5,000. 10,000 feet down. The thing nobody tells you about the deep ocean is how loud the silence is. The only sounds picked up by the drone's hydrophones were the distant groans of the Earth's crust and the faint, unsettling clicks of sperm whales hunting giant squid in the darkness. Down, down it went, deeper than any previous search for MH370 had ever systematically explored. The team on the surface watched their monitors, their faces illuminated only by the soft glow of the data streaming in. 
They were thousands of miles from anywhere, a tiny speck on an angry ocean, chasing a theory that everyone else had laughed at. At 15,000 feet, nearly three miles down, the Pathfinder reached the abyssal plain. What many overlooked is that this isn't a flat, sandy bottom. It's a rugged, hostile landscape. The drone's powerful LIDAR began its work, sweeping beams of coherent light across the sea floor. The detail was breathtaking. It wasn't the vague, shadowy image of sonar. This was a crystal clear, three-dimensional map. Every rock, every fissure, every tiny volcanic vent was rendered in stunning detail. For 72 hours, the drone methodically scanned the area line had pinpointed, a grid covering 50 square miles of forgotten territory. And for 72 hours, there was nothing. The mood on the ship grew heavy. The fuel on the drone was finite. The window was closing. Then, something happened. An alarm, soft at first, then more insistent, echoed through the ship's control room. It wasn't a visual contact. It was something else entirely. The drone's advanced sensors designed to detect faint energy signatures had picked up an anomaly. It was a tiny blip, a whisper of a signal that was not natural. It was artificial. The most shocking fact is that the signal was pulsing with a specific frequency, one that matched the emergency locator transmitter of a Boeing 777's black box. The battery on that box was supposed to be dead for almost 10 years. It should have been impossible. Dr. Line, his face pale, gave the order to move in. The drone turned, its thrusters gently pushing it toward the source of the impossible signal. The team watched, breathless, as the Pathfinder flew over a massive underwater ridge and into a deep, dark canyon no map had ever shown. The signal grew stronger, and that's when the LiDAR began to paint a picture on the screen, a picture of something that had been lost to the world for a decade. The drone was about to show them the impossible. Not a crash, but a landing. The Pathfinder drone glided silently into the colossal, unknown canyon. The signal it was tracking, that impossible electronic ghost, was now a steady pulse, leading the drone deeper into the abyss. The LiDAR beam sliced through the darkness, and the three-dimensional map on the monitors began to build, pixel by agonizing pixel. At first, the shapes were confusing, a scattered collection of debris that could have been anything, but then a distinct form emerged from the gloom. It was a massive wing, sheared from its body, but unmistakably belonging to a large airliner. Its surface was surprisingly clean, scoured by the deep sea currents, but not violently mangled. You see, this wasn't the chaotic, pulverized wreckage of a high altitude impact. As the drone moved forward, the scene became clearer. It was a graveyard, a long haunting trail of debris lay on the canyon floor. Seats, luggage, and personal effects all eerily preserved in the cold, oxygen-starved water. The thing nobody tells you is that at these depths, decomposition happens at an incredibly slow rate. It was a scene frozen in time. The drone's high-resolution cameras zoomed in, capturing images that would soon haunt the world. A child's backpack, a half-open book, a pair of shoes sitting upright on the seabed as if their owner had just stepped out of them. The most shocking fact, however, was what they saw next. As the Pathfinder followed the debris trail, it came upon the main body of the aircraft. It was sitting on the canyon floor, almost perfectly upright. The fuselage was not broken into a million pieces. While the wings had been torn off and the tail section was missing, the main cabin was shockingly intact. It was as if the plane had been gently placed there. This was the ultimate proof for Dr. Line's theory, a controlled ditching. The pilots had fought to the very end to land the plane on the water, and it had sunk almost whole into this deep, hidden trench, far from where anyone had thought to look. What many overlooked in the initial chaos of the discovery was the sheer power of the LiDAR technology. Sonar would have seen a lump, a vague shape that could have been a rock formation. But the Pathfinder's LiDAR was so precise, it could map the individual rivets on the plane's skin. It scanned the cockpit, revealing shattered windows but intact controls. It peered into the passenger cabin, a dark, silent tomb filled with the ghosts of its final journey. The drone spent hours meticulously mapping every inch of the wreckage, creating a perfect digital model. The final resting place of MH370 had been found. But as the AI on board the drone began cross-referencing the LiDAR scans with the known schematics of a Boeing 777, it flagged another anomaly. 
The ghost signal wasn't coming from the plane's black box, it was coming from something lying next to it. The mystery was far from over, it was just beginning. The signal's true source. The discovery of the intact fuselage sent a wave of shock and vindication through Dr. Line's team. They had found it, but the sense of triumph was short-lived. The drone's AI, working silently in the background, kept flashing a persistent, nagging alert. The electronic pulse, the very signal that had led them to this underwater graveyard, was not originating from the aircraft's black box. The drone sensors triangulated the source with pinpoint accuracy. It was coming from an object partially buried in the silt about 50 feet away from the plane's cockpit. Dr. Line ordered the Pathfinder to investigate. The drone, with its delicate thrusters, maneuvered carefully around the ghostly wreckage of MH370 and approached the new target. The LiDAR beams began to scan and a new shape started to form on the screens. The team leaned in, their eyes wide with a mixture of confusion and disbelief. The object was not a piece of the plane. It was something else entirely. It was a perfect sphere about 10 feet in diameter with a surface that was impossibly smooth and non-reflective. It seemed to absorb the LiDAR's laser light, making it difficult for the AI to get a clear reading. You see, the thing nobody tells you is that nature rarely creates perfect spheres on this scale. Geologists on the team were baffled. It wasn't a known geological formation, like a concretion or a volcanic bomb. Its surface was a matte black, showing no signs of erosion or marine growth, which was bizarre. The wreck of MH370, after a decade in the deep, was covered in a thin layer of silt and biofilm. The sphere, however, looked as if it had been placed there yesterday, but the most shocking fact was its apparent age. Sensors designed to analyze material composition suggested the object had been there for a very, very long time, much longer than the 10 years the plane had been missing. What many overlooked was the sheer impossibility of the situation. How could a pristine, ancient sphere be sitting in one of the most remote places on Earth, right next to a modern marvel of aviation? As the Pathfinder circled the object, its high-definition cameras revealed something else. Faint geometric patterns were etched across its surface, forming lines and symbols that matched no known language or culture. They were elegant, precise, and utterly alien. The team was looking at something that, to put it mildly, shouldn't exist. Then, the drone's manipulator arm, a delicate tool designed for collecting samples, extended toward the sphere. The plan was to gently scrape a tiny sample from its surface for analysis, but as the arm got within five feet of the object, every screen on the ship went black. An ear-splitting screech of static blasted through the control room speakers, and then silence. The Pathfinder had gone dark. The signal, both from the drone and the mysterious sphere, had vanished completely. They were blind, deaf, and utterly alone in the middle of nowhere. Panic erupted in the control room. For 48 minutes, the longest 48 minutes of their lives, Dr. Line and his team tried desperately to reestablish contact with the Pathfinder. They sent command after command into the abyss, but received only a deafening silence in return. The multi-million dollar drone, along with the secrets it held, was gone. Just as they were about to accept the catastrophic loss, a single ping appeared on the screen. The drone was back online. Its emergency systems had rebooted and it was slowly ascending on its own. But something was wrong. The drone's main power core was drained, its sensor logs were wiped clean, and its high-resolution LiDAR and camera systems were fried, completely inoperable. The manipulator arm was frozen in a half-retracted position. It was as if something had hit it with a massive electromagnetic pulse, a defensive burst of energy from the sphere. The only data they had left was the LiDAR and sensor data from before the blackout. They had the location of MH370, the images of the debris field, and the eerie scans of the mysterious sphere, but nothing more. So, was the official story a cover-up to hide a truth we aren't ready for? Let us know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe.